Good evening. So this is our Winning Women Expert Speaker Call for the week. And this evening we're talking to Louise Simpson. So I'm Rosemary Cunningham. I'm the founder of Winning Women Essex and now International. And um, what I've been doing is bringing people who I know have got something to really tell us that will enrich our lives, help us sort out the challenges that are going on. And the conversation Louise and I have just had in the five minutes was, what were we talking about, Louise? We were talking about overwhelm, weren't we? Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I think we were kind of touching on, I was saying to Rosemary that often people think that if you can get organised, then there's no overwhelm. And actually, for me, it's actually there's always overwhelm or demands on your time. And a lot of what I talk about is kind of reducing that and finding the balance. And um, there's a quote that I often share, which I think just brings this all home as well, Rosemary, is your outer world of form and experience is a reflection of your inner world of thoughts and feelings. Mm. And, you know, the, the phrase of, you know, cluttered house, cluttered mind, all of these things link into that for me of actually, depending on what we've got going on, that represents in different parts of our life, as well as our home and our space our time, that feeling of, oh my goodness, there's just too many demands on me, I just can't cope with this. And there's definitely a collective feeling at the moment of overwhelm. I think everything seems to have gone back as a thousand miles per hour after all of the kind of various lockdowns and restrictions and things like that, that a lot of people that I've spoken to professionally and friends and family are just saying, oh, if the world could just slow down a little bit, you know, I just feel a little bit, you know, overwhelmed. And I've definitely been feeling it as well, where everything just seems to be kind of, you know, a lot more intense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, and, and we've both had, don't mind me, we've both had skin challenges, haven't we? Mm. Yeah, I've had a bright red face on and off for about 18 months now. And interestingly, all this time on Zoom, it was the bit of me that was, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The rest of me was kind of okay and I could live with it. But you know, when you don't see any, I live by myself, don't see anyone a week, and this bit was scarlet. Oh, it was annoying. And it's all come back. And it's it's just there's there's a lot of anger out there, isn't there? There's a lot of frustration in the collective. There's a lot of people feeling really frustrated and bemused, I think. Yeah. And we've all had something big going on, haven't we? Yeah. And I think for, for me, kind of, you know, this is where um, I don't want people to think about when I say I'm a professional organiser and declutterer, people go, oh, so you're just going to come in and make me get rid of everything. And my house has got to be minimalist and you're going to want me to have my books in rainbow colour. And it's like, no, that's not what it's about. Obviously, if that's what you want from your home, then great. For me, it is much more about giving somebody that ability to put their key in their door to their home and to have that feeling of, oh, I'm home, you're safe, that place to recharge, that you've got somewhere that nurtures you, that no matter what has gone on in the day, you've got somewhere that you can, you know, hide sometimes where you feel like putting the cover over your head and going, I just can't face another day. Um, but for so many people and for so many different reasons, that isn't the case. And, you know, if, if I can help one person be able to, open their door and go ah, then I've done it you know and I've had clients that have had you know they've not invited people into their home for a long period of time because they felt worried about being judged by other people or that the house has got out of control and often for you know many reasons you know bereavement life changes and things like that are some of the reasons that can cause things to build up as well as just general overwhelm of having too much on your plate um, but actually, you know, being able to feel free to come home yourself, but equally invite friends in without that feeling of, oh, my goodness, you know, I've got a quick run around and tidy everything up or keep that door shut and make sure that they don't go into that room. You know, often people talk about the room of doom that is often the spare room or, you know, the playroom maybe downstairs if you've got children that you're like, OK, so and so is coming around. Nobody open that door because I don't want them to see what's in there. Um, and this all has a, an impact on us physically and mentally as well, as well as just that general feeling of, you know, stress. And I think, you know, we kind of shared this um, briefly on the kind of introduction for this call tonight around research into 
the link between clutter and well-being. So one of my uh, fellow professional organisers um, took part in some MSC research, and this was proper kind of validated, you know, really strict research. It wasn't just a, we'll send a Google form around and ask a few people. Interestingly, and I love this, the number of participants was 1,111. So for those of you that are into your numbers or, you know, spirituality, it's a pretty good sign if you get that number of participants filling in your survey. And there were a few kind of big headlines that came out of this that are really important for us all to understand that actually well-being isn't just about exercise, eating well, getting the right sleep, you know, all of these things that we we see on adverts and are constantly told, you know, improve your well-being, start exercise, start drinking more water. But actually, often our space and our homes are the forgotten kind of piece of that puzzle, I think. So this research showed that clutter is subjective. So this is something that, you know, as an organiser, I see all the time. You know, somebody can have 500 books in the room and um, feel absolutely amazing with that because they love books and they don't care that there's no space for anything else whereas somebody else would walk in there going oh my goodness why do you need this many books why have you got that many books on the bookshelf that's stressing me out so you know as with many things you know the things around us are subjective so it's about finding what is comfortable for you and rosemary we've worked together you know, um, in your home. And one of the first things I do with clients is get them to talk about, well, how does that room make you feel? How do you want to feel? Because it's no good me coming in going, well, you should only have this many of this or that should be over there. You've got to do things in a certain way because we are all unique. We all live differently in our homes. We, you know, work or use the space differently. If you've ever watched any of these reality programs like the Stacey Solomon one that's back at the moment, where they put the secret cameras in so they can kind of watch them and see how they use the room, it's so different family to family. So, you know, that was one of the big headlines, but as professional organisers, we kind of went, great, thank you. That's validating what we already knew from work that we do with our clients. But the big one for me, and I'm going to read this out because I know um with research and figures everybody can interpret things differently so i'm always conscious to take full credit for my colleagues research to read it out properly to make sure i get the numbers the right way around but the second major finding was feeling good about home clutter and the ability to create home so we're talking about the psychological sense of home explained almost a quarter of the differences in overall well-being across the participants. A quarter of differences from that feeling of feeling good about your clutter, so not about a magical formula that says it has to be this certain way, but how you feel good and your ability to feel like you have home. That's massive, you know, a quarter of the differences. Let's just let that sink in. You know, when we're thinking about how we're feeling stressed or that everything feels overwhelming, take a look around your space. Think about which parts of your home are supporting you, which parts are recharging you, which parts are making you tense up where you can feel your shoulders. When I speak to clients about their house, whether it's on Zoom or in person, you can feel their shoulders tensing up you can hear the voice change you can see how they scrunch over or talk about tension in their stomach and how you know I've had clients go oh I had you know I, I was I had a bit of a dicky tummy after our session and it's like because all that tension that you've been holding on your body's letting go of it you know we know that when we're in a stress state so you know whether it's stress from you know a tiger chasing us or whether it's stress from not wanting to go into that room because there's past stuff in there that might be from a parent or a partner that have passed away or from a previous relationship or just stuff that's built up over the years if we feel stressed by that our body goes into a stress state where we stop our digestive system working and we're having all sorts of physical impacts on our body so if we can start to notice the parts of our home that are making us feel like that as with this research, over a quarter of the differences of general well-being. And it goes on to say that of those people, 30% of the differences in accomplishment, which is about 
having and achieving meaningful goals. And 20, bless you, 23% of the differences of positive emotions, so joy and happiness, are also across those participants. So when we're thinking about people like you and I, Rosemary, that run our own business, work from home, pretty much in our home a lot of the time, um, you know, our ability to feel accomplishment, having goals, wanting to strive for them, feeling joy, feeling happiness are all linked to our well-being. But a huge part of that is about our space and feeling good in it. Isn't that interesting? And I, I'll just add there, if I may, that I was just saying to you earlier, I, I haven't been working in the office that you helped me model mm. recently because I've been in a quite a big place of indecision in my business quite challenged to make decisions and really go for things and and I've realized why I got it today was I haven't been attaching enough joy to the outcome mm. I'd be more worried about things going wrong than things going right yeah really got it today but as a consequence there's been a build-up of paper a yeah, build-up of stuff there's too much on the walls mm. there's things creeping onto the floor the shelves and Yes, really interesting, isn't it? So outside, very much reflecting inside. Hence yeah. me either wanting to work somewhere completely different, go down the seafront with a pad. But if I yeah. take my computer down there, I'd be done the time, <laughs> however cold it is. Or wanting to work in the lounge, which is clear. Yeah. And clutter attracts clutter. You know, we often talk about if you start to leave bits of paper somewhere so it, it can be your office a lot of people if you've got an island in your kitchen um that tends to be a really popular place where people start to put bits because they either don't want to deal with it now for whatever reason or just too busy and then it starts to pile up and then it becomes this oh my goodness there's stuff that i haven't dealt with so now it's too overwhelming because there's all these past things that i haven't dealt with i'll just add the new stuff to it because that's that's too overwhelming and then you know, that's where it builds. It can creep up. You know, a lot of people will say, well, surely, you know, when you see these TV programs, these people just need to get on and do it. And it's like, if it was as simple as that, we'd all have, you know, no clutter anyway, but it can just creep up. And it is those, you know, actually, I'm feeling overwhelmed with this, or I don't know what to do with this, or actually, like, I, I'll just put that there. And maybe I'll come back to it later. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it is, there are so many parts of us and, you know, things that we're dealing with that come into these reasons why things build up. But, you know, we've talked about kind of the impact on the well-being and, and, and that side. But I think one easy way to think about it is a phrase that's called visual noise. Mm -hmm. So I always say to people, if you imagine that you walk into a room and maybe if you've got children, the children are over here playing with some loud toy your partner or you might have left the TV on in one room. There might be, you know, roadworks outside with noise going on, the washing machines on. You walk in and go, oh, my goodness, you know, oh, it's too loud. Kids, turn that off or go and turn the TV off yourself or shut the door to the, the room where the washing machine is so that you kind of lower that volume because your brain's going, it's just too much to deal with. Well, visual noise is what clutter does. So if you walk into a room and there is clutter building up, which often represents things that you haven't dealt with or things that you're having to make decisions about or maybe linking in with, as I said, like people that it brings up memories and things like that attached to it. Mm -hmm. The same messages, like with actual noise, are going to your brain. So your brain is still having to deal with all of this input, as well as in some circumstances, trying to work out is it safe to get through here is that pile of paper about to fall over you know our brains having all this input into it to go right okay avoid that pile there oh no oh my goodness that's my tax return I don't really want to have to deal with that but it's still it's going to be late and then I'm going to get in trouble but over here there's this and oh there's all the children's stuff here and I'm going to trip over it um and you know so that your brain's still having to deal with that and that's why often I say to people let's talk about finding the right volume for you because in the same way as the research showed to us that clutter is subjective we can all tolerate a different level of of noise and somebody's just put in the comments apologies it doesn't show us your name but it just says i am noise sensitive audible and visual and 
you know, we, we all have different levels. Some people can live in a 10. You know, they can live with noise and sound everywhere. A lot of creative people that I've worked with have, you know, they can cope with a lot of that noise going on and the, the visual noise as well, because that's how it fires their creativity, especially artists, I find. But, um, you know, others of us are, I need it at a three or a four. I can be at a five or a six briefly, but then I need to kind of hide away and go back into a three and a four. Otherwise, as you, as, as the user said here, is um, I feel stressed or, you know, it's just too much. I can't deal with it. And I almost have to go, you know, uh, take me away from this. So, you know, just think about how you want to feel, as I said at the beginning, but equally, where is the volume turning up? And how could you maybe turn that volume down just a little bit? So you're never going to turn the volume off completely unless you have nothing in your house. But actually, let's just turn that volume down just so that it's a little bit more easier to cope with. And that can help with your resilience to cope with other stuff as well. So, you know, I run my own business. I work part time. I'm a single mum with two children that are with me six days a week. So... There's a lot of demands on my time. And even though I am organized, I have times where I just go, you know what, just leave me alone. I just need like, I just need some time out. I need to step off the world and then I'll be back in like half an hour. But recognizing that when thing, that volume level is getting too high and uh, actually I do need to tackle that bit of paperwork even though I'm too tired because then I know I'll rest better or I know that I need to, so we, we moved house a couple of months ago. So the first couple of months for me were really busy work wise. I was helping other people unpack their houses and then going, OK, when I get home, I don't really want to be doing my own unpacking and, and putting things away. But a couple of times I just went, you know what, actually, I know I will feel better. And often that's what it is, is that, you know, um, I, I often talk about like helping your future self as well. So for me, putting the dishes away at night time isn't just about putting the dishes away. It's about when I get up in the morning and mornings are really busy with three of us and school and things to get ready. It's about one less thing to do. It's about not walking into stuff left over from yesterday and having a fresh start to the day and feeling energized rather than, oh God, I've still got the dishes to do from last night. So with the nights that I don't feel like putting them away and clearing that away, I remember how I feel on the days that I do and what a difference that makes. Wonderful. We've got some comments here. Please, if you're commenting, we can't see who you are because the joys of StreamYard, unless you tell StreamYard who you are. So tell us who you are, please. And um, that would be lovely. We can see there's three or four of you here. Yeah. It's really interesting, Louise. I, the last person... The second to last person I interviewed here was Emma Johnson, who's a money mindset coach who mm. uses EFT. And I did a bit of work with her afterwards. And she, go back and listen to the recording if this interests you, please, any of you. She was saying, say you've got guilt around clutter from being a little girl. You, mm. Why haven't you tidied your bedroom? Mummy's annoyed with you. Oh, hi, Tamela. Oh, Claire, lovely. Um, hi, Tamela. Um Mummy's annoyed with you. What you've let me down, you haven't tidied your bedroom, that kind of thing. We can have these people have these conversations with their kids, don't they? And yeah. will you take that on? It's still there in your subconscious. Now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've worked with people that feel the need, you know, that they're not as organized because when they were younger, their parents were everything has to be just right, you know, that coaster has to be there. And they go, But I grew up in this, but for some reason there's this part of me that's almost like a rebellion of going, well, I don't want to be organized, but it's starting to have an impact on my life or my relationship or, you know, all of these other parts. So there's so much that often comes from, you know, people that have grown up in a boarding school situation. And then when they become older, because they never really had any many things around them, then it's like, well, I want more things. I'm going to have loads of things that make me feel really like it's my space and nobody else can touch it because I never had that when I was younger. Or people that have grown up in a really cluttered house that go, well, I don't want that because I know what that felt like as a child and I want my children to feel like they can invite people in. So, you know, we're complex, aren't we? Our brain stores all these things from childhood or from comments that have been made to us or 
things that we're reading in the media that tell us, you know, we can have it all, but only if it looks like this. And it's kind of, and that's why I often talk about, you know, it is balance. I, I, I like if I could remove should and perfection, because often the first thing that people say to me is, well, I don't really think you can help me because I think I may be beyond help because I've always been messy or, or disorganized or whatever. But I should be able to do this because other people seem to manage to work full time and keep their house organized or whatever it is. Or I look at these pictures on social media and I can't see why they can have their house that just looks like a perfect tidy house. And my house looks like this, you know, and there's so much that comes out of that of, well, should is a big word. You know, we fall into that. I should be able to do this. Well, where's that coming from? Who told you that? Or who told you that you're messy or disorganized? You know, I think from my perspective, the mindset bit of, you know, whether you call it a growth mindset or positive mindset or whatever, of I'm not organized yet, or I can be organized, or um, you know, looking at it person. that way rather than you are something. Because as soon as you say, and you know this, Rosemary, from all the work that you do with your fabulous clients, is when you're saying I am something, you're putting that on you. You know, you're bringing that into your reality. And actually, you know, I can be organized, or I'm not organized yet however you want to phrase it of giving yourself that credit of it might not be in the skill that you were taught your parents might not have been organized in the same way that our parents may not have dealt with their emotions so we learn to protect our emotions or not display them because otherwise we're being too emotional or too soft or all those phrases that you know i'm sure people listening have had some element of this in somewhere so I think in the same with organizing and, you know, organizing your time or, you know, your space, there are so many different aspects. And that's why there's not a one size fits all. And for me, it's very much, I talk very much about it's the kind of mental and the physical. So it's working with the client to understand what's going on as well as going in and going, okay, so you want, like we did with you, Rosemary, you want your office, it's not working. You don't feel you feel stuck in it, you know, how is it making you feel? How do you want to feel? What's important to you? Um, and being able to bring that in, but equally understanding where some of this stuff might have come from and, um, you know, what are the shoulds that you're telling yourself that you should be a certain way or that if you're a coach or, a, you know, you're doing a certain business, well, I should be in a suit and smart. I shouldn't wear bright colours or I shouldn't do this or I shouldn't have spiritual stuff behind me because people might think that might put some people off and it's like well actually let's focus on you and what you want to give out and who you want to attract because actually the people that don't get you won't want you won't want them in your life or your business anyway brilliant brilliant okay claire horsley lovely claire what is it oh, i've lost it so often I feel with children, it's explaining why you're asking and how it helps and it impacts positively on the family. This, is, this approach works well with my 14 year old. Thank you, Claire. And uh, yeah, just and kids, are, said kids are great. Um, their kids are normally quite good declutterers and um, not so not necessarily the organizing unless they've had that skill kind of taught to them because it is a life skill that as with many things, you can be taught and learn. And that's a big part of when I work with people that sometimes it might just be one session because it's giving them the motivation and the skills that they can go off and continue. And then they might be like, well, actually, can you come back and help me with this bit? But, you know, it sometimes is just enough to give some of that skill and to teach that and help them understand the impact that it's having. But children, when I've worked with children, and like with the family, obviously, but you know, children will be like, no, I don't like that anymore, that can go. And then often you'll have the mum going, oh, but great aunt Sally gave you that. Don't you want to keep that? Or grandma gave you that when you were born. That's really important to keep. And the children are like, no, I don't like it anymore. Or, you know, well, you only had that bought last month for your birthday. Yeah, but I'm bored of it now and I don't really want it. I'd rather give it to somebody else so they can have it. And, you know, it is about, well, actually, if it's your space and it's your things, that's why when we work in people's houses, we only ever deal with the items that belong to the person that we're working with because it's got to be about you and your stuff. And, 
you know, saying I should keep this because this was from my gran, but I really hate it. And every time I look at it, it doesn't give me positive feelings. It just makes me kind of remember her shouting at us or, you know, family arguments or whatever. You know, why not let that per pe that piece of, you know, ornament or furniture or whatever it is, go to a home where it's going to be used and liked, but equally let yourself let go of those feelings that every time you're looking at that or you see it in the room, it's triggering it up. It's like when I work with people that have got divorced, you know, and I've been there, is that you look at things and go, but I like it, but it just reminds me of a certain time in my life or that relationship or that argument or that moment. And I don't want to be reminded of that anymore. So actually, for that reason, I'm, I'm going to let go of this item. It's not necessarily that I don't like it, but what it triggers in me. And that's where, again, you know, that physical, like with the noise aspect, that physical trigger, if you start to feel that with things that are in your home, it's trying to tell you that it shouldn't be there. Yeah. Yeah, and Claire, just, um, Emma Johnson described it as a micro trauma. Mm. Yeah, if it, particularly if it's something from your past and you're re triggering off that old belief that you've been taught or something yeah. that's a complete mismatch mm. that you don't, you don't even own anymore. Yeah, it's like a micro, micro trauma to your nervous system. Yeah, and Claire said it in the comments about giving to children that need them, and I think that's a great way, but it equally works just as well with us as adults, Claire. So often, if we're kind of like, well, this was really expensive, or that so and so gave that to me as a present, or whatever, that you're not, you can't like get yourself across the line because for whatever reason you're holding on to it, even though you, you know, open your wardrobe or see it in your house all the time and go, well, I'm never going to wear that or use it there's something in you that kind of feels like you just can't let it go if you can find the motivation that actually by giving that away it's going to help somebody else and that's why with children it's great because they're much more in tune with their kind of feelings and sensitivity and care for others you know when they're at that age where they haven't been taught that that's not the right way to behave or that you shouldn't feel that of feeling um as adults if we feel like we're helping somebody often it can get us over that line. So if we're donating it to a charity that we care about um, or it's somebody in need or where we've seen like in the news where people's houses have burnt down and they have nothing and then they say, look, if anybody could donate anything, and all these people come forward going, oh, I've got bags of clothes that were from my children from when they were little, but I haven't known what to do with them. You can have them. You know, we find this that that feeling of generosity and the feeling of that we're benefiting somebody else can often get us over the line to to sort of get to that decision of well actually i don't want this or i don't like it or i don't use it but it can go to help somebody else i'm happy to let it go rather than just feeling like well i'm just going to throw it away or just you know give it to give it to the charity shop it's almost like if you can make that connection that you can see where it's going or the benefit it's going to bring or maybe a charity that you know like the hospice or something they've cared for your family member then often that can help us just release it and go do you know what it's time for it to go but don't I feel amazing that I'm helping this charity because they helped look after my dad or my mum or whatever it was so finding some sort of incentive can often help with letting go of items and really finding the space that you want and, and surrounding yourself with things that are topping up your battery, giving you that safe place away from the world to recharge and go out there and, you know, achieve the goals and dreams and things that you really want to do with your life rather than wasting that time dealing with how to organize or sort the things that are surrounding you or feeling uncomfortable in your space. Yeah. Yeah. So what's Claire said, great topic, especially this time of year. Memories are always with us from loved ones, but hard to let go of sometimes the physical items because yeah. of triggers. Yeah. And I think with, with memories, Rosemary, you know, if we, you know, if you think of an item that it triggers a really strong memory for you or that there, there is a strong memory of, you know, being with your gran or, you know, your mum or days out or something, you know, we we can hear a song and that memory is still with us. 
you know, the memory is in there, the item, you know, where people have lost things in fires, as an example, or water damage, they're not going to forget that person that was in their life. You know, often we think that we have to keep this item because otherwise we'll lose the memory. But, you know, where we work with people that are maybe downsizing after their partners passed away and moving into like residential or sheltered housing, often they're going from a family home that they may have been in for 30 years to a one bedroom kind of bedsit type accommodation. And it's like the resistance there can be, well, I'm going to lose all my memories, but actually you can talk about them. And often, you know, especially in that sort of situation or following a bereavement, people do just need to sometimes talk about it. And then they're like, but I can let it go now because I know that that memory will always be there. If I talk, you know, if they're having to let go of big dinner services or big pieces of furniture because they're moving into a smaller accommodation, that memory will still be there. When I think about the dinners that we used to have or the time in that room or when my gran used to come to visit and we used to sit around that table, all I need to do is think about my gran and I can still see, I can smell it, you know, it's like with me with clementines i always think of my grandpa peeling them whilst i was sat on his lap as a child but i don't need a clementine in front of me i can i can you know even just talking about it now i can smell that orange and i can feel the orange peel and how he used to always open the orange in a certain way i don't need a clementine here to bring me that memory it will always be there there are things that you can do you know you can we we've created like photo um, books of some items before so that people have got like a digital record of it. Um, if it's something, you know, in particular or unique, but I think just remembering if, you know, anybody that's watching this can think of a specific memory. It's a bit like the lemon experiment that they do about taste and things. If you imagine there's a exercise that they do about kind of um, how our brain works and how actually uh, you don't even need to see something and how powerful our brain is about bringing things in. And they say, open a f your, close your eyes or you can have them open. And I want you to imagine you're going into your kitchen and you walk up to your fridge. So you're seeing your fridge in your eyes. Open the door for me. And on the middle shelf is a lemon. And I want you to take the lemon out and put it on your worktop in your kitchen. Take a knife from your drawer and cut that lemon in half and then in half again, and then take a bite of the quarter of the lemon. Now, most people will get that kind of feeling in their jaw mm -hmm. of, oh, oh, I can, oh, yeah. like there's not even a lemon here, but I can taste it. And it's the same with our memories and those sorts of things that they triggering us and the things that surround us are triggering us without us even realizing because all those triggers are happening. But actually with the memory aspect they're they're always there yeah interesting you've got a question here from claire you've got me thinking maybe it's because we have that physical touch with items i think to some extent it is um it's kind of that double link of you've got maybe the memory and you know it, it reminds you but i think um often you know it is about just going like if it's something that makes you feel good and you really love and it's your old blanket from when you were a baby or a teddy bear or something and when you have that near you it just makes you feel safe then great keep it but if it's things that aren't doing that or bring you down or trigger bad memories um but i think you know that that physical touch can be an element for some people it can be part of the reason why they've got too much stuff because they you know um i've worked with people and you know my colleagues that work specifically with hoarding cases people are so emotionally attached to items that they almost have to touch every single item before they can even consider kind of what to let go so you know we are so complex and there are so many reasons why clutter can build up or we can be become disorganized or procrastinate and put things off but to start to think about stop or stop thinking about what you should be doing and what you're striving for, which isn't your goal and start to focus on how you want to feel in your space. What is it that you want from your life and how is your space helping you achieve that? Mm -hmm. Brilliant. 
Fabulous. So if somebody would like to know more, Louise, how can they, what are the different ways of working with you? Do you? Oh, yeah, so um, my website is louisesimpsoncoaching.co.uk. I'm on um, social media channels, but, you know, I work via Zoom. So for some people, obviously distance-wise, so I'm based in Chelmsford and Essex, I work with clients all over. Uh, we work via Zoom, um, depending on whether that's, it can be a mixture of productivity, time management, or helping come up with a plan of how to tackle their physical space. Um, and I also work in home in the kind of Chelmsford within 45 minutes kind of circle radius. Um, but yeah, if anybody wants to find out more, they can obviously have a look. I do a free initial call. So if anybody's there thinking, oh, my goodness, I really need somebody to help me sort my life or my space out. Um, let's have a chat. Let's talk about what challenges you're facing and how we can help you feel at home and improve your well-being wonderful because with me you came here didn't you i think you were here about two hours weren't you yeah a couple of hours i think we were there a couple of hours and we we moved some furniture didn't we and um brought in plants from different areas and just changed the position of things and yeah, and I think with your office, Rosemary, and I know, I know you won't mind me sharing because you've, you've been very kind in sharing the experience, but I think, you know, what we did with you was think, you know, well, actually you're feeling stuck. Okay, well, you know, you're facing a wall. Let's look at changing the furniture so that we're bringing nature in so that you can see nature outside, that you are such a, you know, great big heart and caring and loving person and you give that to your clients and actually let's bring that out you know you do have a spiritual element so we created a kind of workspace for you that brought in those different elements that when you were doing zooms and things you had things around you that brought you in and you know showed who you are and how you can help your clients and you know that's what it's all about it's about making your space work for you but equally recharging you and showing who you are and yes, from time to time, as you say, it will, we can build up because there's things going on in your life or as we touched on at the very beginning, the collective energy is just, you know, bringing you down or making you, you're getting drawn into that kind of negativity or overwhelm. And it's not just your stuff, but actually, you know how to get back there and you know how it feels when your space feels right. Yes, I think you're right. Once you've gone, once you've been there, it's, it's easier to to find that again, isn't it? Mm. Much easier to, even if sometimes and one of my mentors just said, get all your papers and don't try and sort them there and then. Put them in a box. Yeah, and I've done. And that I think, before. you know, when you come to the actual organising, you know, often you know people will fall into that. I've got to do everything in one go, and actually, just start small. Just do ten minutes. You know, I often talk about set 10 minute time or if you've got I won't say her name because she'll go off but it begins with an A um if you've got a little device that you can talk to set a time and put some music on um you know think right well do you know what I'm gonna spend 10 minutes tackling that paper or my kitchen table or my dining table because that will just help clear my mind a little bit and it does you know it will just give you a little bit more space to focus on all the other things that are going oh raise me don't forget this or you know the people the clients or the friends or the you know contacts that you've got coming in and different things that you've got to do just clearing that little bit more space so that you just feel you know a little bit less overwhelmed the volume's just a bit lower and it's a bit more easier to cope with that makes you more resilient to cope with all the challenges that might come your way um you know that's what it's about and interestingly one of my favorite books my one of my favorite money books is just happens to be sitting here this one tosha silva oh and yeah a, a one of her five pillars for changing your financial situation is called how to live fully from divine abundance is tidying yeah Yep, and continually tidying a drawer it doesn't have to be huge, but gradually working your yep. way through everything. And as far as she's concerned, the two are just totally connected. Yep. And so. if you think it's all energy, you know, 
our, our home is an extension of our energy field. So if there are things piled up everywhere, we're creating blockages in, our, in the flow of energy in our home, you know, in the flow of our life as well as the, the mental impact that has on us, the physical impact of the stress of it. But just from an energy perspective, you know, you know how different you can feel when you walk into different rooms or maybe you go to a friend's house and it's completely different to how your house is and it kind of just, you can feel like it just feels a bit more stuck or that there's like almost something like in the air that it's just some sort of unresolved, you know, unresolved feelings or whatever. Um, and we all have different aspects of that that can creep into our homes as well. Or maybe where, um, you know, Rosemary, you know, the charity that you support where you've brought in items that maybe have been donated and they start to take over your home. And you can just feel that kind of, you know, just feels like everything's a little bit more sort of closed in and just heavier energy. And then when that goes, it's like, oh, I'd forgotten how this feels. Yeah. Yeah, I'd spirit definitely. I try and keep it all out of the house these days when I can. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's that same thing of being conscious of what we're bringing in, and you know, in our bedroom, if we, you know, some people have had to work in their bedrooms because of space issues um, and things like that. And you know, well, I'm not sleeping great. Well, could that be to do with the fact that you've got you know lots of tax papers in the corner, or you know? wedding photos from a previous relationship that you don't know what to do with in the bottom of your wardrobe that you see every day when you open open your wardrobe to get clothes you know all these things that they almost become kind of like the elephant in the room that you kind of they're there but you forget that they're there and it just you carry on and it's not until somebody like me that comes in that's completely independent from everything and goes okay so let's talk about why you might have that there or let's talk about you know how you're using this room because and they go oh yeah i've never really thought about that you know that i've got loads of horror books on my bookshelf in my bedroom but i'm I, i'm a really like, i'm an insomniac well let's think about kind of what sort of energy you're bringing into your bedroom or you know in in your living room you know is do you have space to relax because you know your bedroom and your living room is often the place where you know that's the time to relax whereas the kitchen is much more functional so you know cookbooks and stuff like that great in there you don't really want them in your bedroom because it's about switching your brain off and relaxing so just starting to think about you know um the that feeling that you get in rooms but equally thinking about what is that room intended for what do you want from that room and what's in there that doesn't match up with that and just having a look around and most people that are on the call or watch this back will probably immediately think of a certain part of their room or their bedroom or their house of some aspect that they go oh yeah that's what she's talking about and maybe just take 10 minutes to go so does it have to be in here if it does then do i need it on full show where it's kind of jumping out of me can i you know i've had people that I've had to work from their bedroom because they don't have space or they've got a partner that's also working from home, especially over the last couple of years. And they put like a beautiful silk blanket over their work stuff over night time because they're then, you know, visually their brain is seeing this beautiful silk blanket rather than the work stuff. So whilst they know the work stuff's under there, the immediate response that their brain is giving them is, isn't that beautiful blanket i remember buying that on my holiday to here or somebody gave it to me look at the colors of it and your brain is going into the positive and the beauty rather than the looking at a pile of post-its and notes for work so you know sometimes it is about removing something from a room or changing things around but sometimes it's as simple as well maybe i just cover it over or put it in a box so that i'm not having to look at it every day and I know deep down that that's in that box, but on that instant, I'm thinking about the beauty of that silk blanket rather than the work stuff that's underneath. So it's about simple things that you can do, not adding to the overwhelm because we're, we're all busy and got enough on our plate, but simple things, breaking it down, thinking about how you can get that plan in place, building those kind of habits in your life where, you know, maybe when you make your morning coffee, 
you might put away the breakfast things, you know, once you're making your coffee after breakfast so that you start to kind of add little things on to things that you already do and build, building like habit stacking, we call it, but building things on so that it doesn't feel like you're going, oh my goodness, you're going to come and tell me like I've got to do all this differently because I already feel overwhelmed. It's just about lowering that volume, finding the balance and just feeling that ah, I'm home. Mm. Beautiful. Louise, thank you so much. Please um, put your details in the comments and I'll add them as well. Thank you. And uh, if, you're, if you've caught the end of this and you want to hear more, I'll, all the recordings for these sessions are in the guide section of the Winning Women page. So, Louise, thank you so much. We've covered Thanks for having up. me. Yeah, very well. Welcome. And, um, yeah, thank you for sharing your wisdom. And um, yeah, bye bye for now. Good night, everyone.